I'm standing in front of the hand-picked vegetables from Pan American Seed. This bed behind me shows some of the 2025 releases, and Josh is here to tell us a little bit more. Here's Josh. I'll wait just a second until everyone comes over. And I'm also really short, so I'm going to stand up here so that I can, you know, pretend like I'm taller. Just a few minutes, at least. Um, but it's really, really good to see you all. I know that there's some familiar faces. Um, as Katie said, my name is Josh Kirschenbaum. I'm the Vegetable Business and Portfolio Manager for Pan American Seed. So we develop the varieties of veggies and flowers. We produce seed of it, and then we sell it to distribution companies all around the world. Distribution companies meaning the catalogs that you buy from, online retailers, all of that type of stuff. Our vegetable program is really about 15 years old, which in the whole scheme of things is relatively short because it takes a really long time to develop a new variety and produce seed of it, get it distributed, um, so we're really proud of the accomplishments that we have made in a relatively short amount of time. When we're looking at things to introduce on the veggies, we're really focused on home gardeners and fresh market farmers. And when I say fresh market farmers, I'm talking about the folks that would sell at a farmer's market or a local restaurant. Um, and because of the fact that we just got into this and some of our competitors have been doing it for honestly hundreds of years, we also wanted to have differentiated products. So the likelihood of finding us with 20 different round red slicing tomatoes in our assortment is probably pretty low. Um, I have a sneak peek of some future introductions that we don't even have names for yet that I just want to show you and get th your thoughts on. Um, but just to kind of talk a little bit about some of the things that you see in here, basil is one of our number one uh, crops that we focus on. We have a series called Everleaf basils and there's four varieties in it. If any of you have grown basil before, you'll know that once it starts to flower, the plant kind of starts to fizzle out. It doesn't keep producing leaves. And so one of the things that we have tried to do is develop varieties that are really, really late to flower. And what you see here is a mix of these everleaf. So if you see the name everleaf in the basil, it means it's really late to flower. And hopefully, I don't need to ramble on about it. You can see how much leaf material is on each plant, and these have not been harvested. If a consumer or home gardener were to take it home and harvest it, it would start bushing out even more, and you will get loads and loads and loads of leaf material to cook with all season long. So we have your standard Genovese type, which is the um, you know sweet standard sweet basil. We have our Everleaf Emerald Towers, um, which is also kind of a, a sweet basil, but these really nice dark green leaves. We introduced a Thai Towers a few years ago, and mind you, I am very partial. Hopefully in the next few minutes, you'll see that I'm kind of um, crazy uh, for vegetables in particular, but uh, I find this to be highly ornamental too. At our research facility in Elburn, which is about 15 miles away from here, we have a landscape um, area, and they've incorporated the Emerald Towers into the landscape and it looks freaking phenomenal, um, especially with this, like, the, you know, the purple stems um, contrasting with the green leaves. Thai basil has tend to have more of a, a licorice anise flavor. And then this year we introduced our lemon, and I made you guys something that you'll be able to taste the lemon basil over there, but feel free to come over here and just smell the leaf. It has this really bright citrusy flavor along with the basil. I like to use it like in vinaigrettes. I, cooking with fish is a great way to um, use it. I made a ricotta dip with it that um, hopefully you'll agree tastes good. Um, <laughs> lots of different uses. And you can make pesto with it too. It just adds a different flavor profile. So our basils are definitely something that we're really, really uh, passionate about and that we're working really hard on. Another, well, these, this variety here, the, the plant's looking a little haggard right now on our cucumbers, but I single-handedly believe that cucumbers, and in particular our compact varieties like patio snacker or quick snack, which is a variety that we have in our kitchen minis, is like a perfect choice for hanging baskets. And if I could single-handedly change the world and make people grow cucumbers and hanging baskets, I think my life accomplishments would be met. <laughs> Yeah, I can retire and, and rest <laughs> easy knowing that. It. But they're really, really, especially our varieties that have more compact vines, um, they're perfect for hanging baskets. Patio Snacker and Quick Snack, which is another variety that I'll show you in our kitchen minis, also don't need insects to pollinate them. 
So if you're on the 70th floor of a high rise, you can grow these and you'll still get cucumbers. Um, so no insects needed if you're in an area where there's not a lot of pollinators, this will still produce the cucumbers. Hmm. What's that? Bitter? Uh, it's, no, it, it is most, m the question was whether it was burpless or a bitter. Most new cucumber genetics nowadays all have that bred into them. It's just the really old heirloom types where some of them can still be a little bit bitter. So yes, these, and, and hopefully, oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and there's some of these can taste over there too. Moving on to tomatoes, one of the things that we really focus on in our tomatoes is trying to have that heirloom look with added disease resistance, productivity, vigor, better fruit quality. Like brandy wine, which is kind of like the poster child of heirloom tomatoes, is one of my favorite tasting tomatoes. I love it. But I am lucky if I can get one to three ripe fruit at the end of the season that are actually intact and, and that I could actually eat. And so what we've really tried to do is add in all of the benefits that Brandywine has as far as the interesting shape and the color and the flavor, of course, but adding it in with a modern day disease resistance package and vigor. And so what we see here is a new variety called Wonder Star Red. So our Wonder Star series are gonna be determinate plants, which the determinant means that they stay relatively compact, that has the heirloom-like fruit. It is super duper early to mature. I know you can't see it here, but out at our research facility earlier today, there were so many fruit on the plant that were way overripe. Um, but it has that nice flavor and interesting shape. The red is the first one. I'll show you some, when I. We walk over here to look at some of the uh, future stuff that we have going on. Uh, I'll show you some additions to the Wonder Star series. And then things like um, Patapeno, which is an All America Selection Award winner, is another example of a way that we're trying to solve a problem for a consumer that doesn't have a lot of space. This does great in a hanging basket, it does great on the patio container, um, and it does great as kind of like a low growing um, front of your garden bed option too. So Patapeno is another kind of spec that we have um, going on. You can see we have the hanging basket tomatoes, that's Topsy, Tom, and Tumbler. And then there's a whole, the pad over there also highlights some of our other container varieties. So we have our little series of tomatoes, which have a cherry tomato, a slice of tomato, a plum tomato, that all do really well in a container. We are finding that from the research, more and more people have less and less space to garden. And so it's really important for us to kind of reduce the size of our plants so that more people can grow them and gives people the opportunity to grow them. When you guys plant your tomatoes, do you have a system? These were actually planted, I think, in um, middle of June, is that right? Week 21, so just about 90. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny, well, kind of funny. And you're, so you see all of these beautiful flowers in the ball floor plant selected area. The fertilizer from this area used to be connected, and like last year, these plants were like, I know, we can see you. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We finally were able to not do that because it was actually like making the plants brittle, and they don't need, our veggies don't need as much fertilizer. And so they're much more manageable right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, right. You can see me. Right, you can see me. So that's actually a good thing. Um, sharing a secret fertilizer, I don't know specifically that you can. No, so our fertilizer is called It's complicated. Because at the beginning of the season, everything in the garden.
to have vegetables. My like at home secret is, is I like to just get an all purpose organic veggie fertilizer. When I plant the plant, I'll put a scoop of it in the hole. And then usually around flowering time, I'll give it a little side dress. Um, I prefer the granular dry fertilizers just because when it rains, it's not gonna wash away and it's slow release. And usually that is all I need to do for um, the, the, these types of veggies. And I also look and see if the plant is needing something. Like if it's looking a little weak, quite honestly, like these probably could use a little bit more fertilizer. Um, so yeah, help knowing when it's time and like the plant's looking a little weak and hungry, it's usually another opportunity to side dress. But because it's not a very potent fertilizer, it's not like you're gonna usually, if you're using just a standard all-purpose, you're gonna over sponge or follow the instructions of the um, bag. Can you talk a little about the... Oh, no, that's a really good idea. Thanks. Something you heard. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that boggles my mind is that people that come through here and see these gazillion of different plants, like, there's no way that I, with the brain capacity that I have, would be able to remember all of it. And so what we've really tried to do in our catalog is categorize all of our products so that if you look at our catalog and say, I want stuff for patio, you'll know to look for the patio place. If you want things for baskets, you look for the basket place. So we've really, essentially, what we're trying to do is categorize things to make it easier for everyone. So where the in the case of the basil, you can see right there, there's some in a container and some in the ground. So that would be a groundbreaker and a patio plate. It's not one or the other. There is some overlap. That would be way too easy. Um, but that's what we've really tried to do in an effort to make our product more easy to understand as it should be grown. I um, try my best to name things so that they kind of give it away, but it doesn't always work. So. And then the kitchen mini, we can talk about over here too, unless someone has some questions about this. Sure. Right. All right, Landon or Josh, what do you fertilize the burpee area with? Some, I think you were asking about that, didn't you? Do we know? Same. It's the same. They have brand new soils. Yeah. Right. Ooh. Yeah. As a vegetable gardener, I'm always looking for the newest, best flavors, most disease resistant, easiest to grow, and of course, best tasting. Now move along from the full size plants, let's talk about kitchen minis. So before we do, um, our offering is um, with our account for kitchen minis. And this is just a fantastic yeah. indoor option for those, no, what, what's, what is it? No, no garden, garden or no, no problem. problem. Right. So, uh, so I'm super excited to talk to you guys today about kitchen minis. Um, they are our genetically compact series of uh, container vegetables. Uh, we have a beautiful basil, we have several tomatoes, a cucumber, uh, sweet and hot peppers. There's really something for everyone here. Um, my favorite new product is our bonsai basil. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I prefer to do the least amount of work when picking as possible. And uh, this doesn't require you to cut it. I can just kind of pull it off and sprinkle it on whatever I want. Um, and it is delicious. It has that natural, beautiful basil taste if you kind of run your hands through it. You'll smell this just incredible basil smell um, of a nice root basil. It packs a huge punch. Um, another really exciting product is uh, our Clipstand Cucumber. Uh, I believe you guys had some of the water earlier. Yes. Um, yep. So if you tasted that, this is too delicious cucumber flavor. That is our quick snack and you can find it right here. Um, it is so cute. I've had it on my countertop and it's just it's delightful to look at. I live in the city. Um, so just having a little bit of green always makes me really excited. Um, and it's really fast and produces a ton. Um, I love the taste of all of our tomatoes. They're fantastic. We have hot peppers that range from mild to habanero. So there's really something for everyone. And then our beautiful fresh bites. Uh, there's three different colors of sweet peppers and they're the perfect size so i would encourage you guys all to check them out uh take a look and uh, yeah, uh, yeah yeah thank you so much for your time yeah. and everyone is going to receive a kitchen mini brochure that has them all listed in there um and again these are all available from seed but they would find these in store <laughs> shoppers would find these in store with probably a little fruit on them yep. almost an yeah. impulse buy like right at the counter we, they could be at grocery store chains mm -hmm. 
They're you at guys, Costco right now. They're at Trader Joe's right now. So, yeah. Yeah. They're at Armstrong Garden yeah. Center. Yeah. Uh, the ones up yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, we're all down to Yeah, yeah. You're, you're watering these like a house plant. You know, you're not repotting them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's the sample that you sent me. And it's gorgeous. It looks fantastic. That's we love plant. to hear. It's ornamental. Yeah. It gets little white flowers at the top, and even those are super cute. And the bees come, but um, and it's tasty. so you don't have to chop. This is so you just kind of sprinkle some more flavor on your salads. So um, sponsored by Kitchen Minis and Burpee, we have a little tasting area. So we'll get started. I'll start from this side, Actually, and then before I'll... we taste, yeah. sorry, can I just talk? Because yeah. these are future things. Those are future. Yeah, things. yeah oh, I just okay. wanted to show you. Yep. Sorry, sorry, sorry gonna make you wait one more okay. second but i showed you the wonder star red this is the right fruit that i got today from it so to give you that idea pink is on the way like you guys are some of the only people that have seen this stuff yet so pink is on the way and then eventually we'll have a yellow and an orange to match our wonder star they'll all be determinant compact plants late light resistance other disease resistances good flavor cool shapes um this is something else so i want to get your thoughts on this so this it's like considered a Campari type size wise. Mm -hmm. And you can see the striping on it. I did bring my little knife out here and these have all been washed. So if you want to, um, but. All right, hold on. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's got this really nice bright red interior mm -hmm. and the flavor on it is great. So I'd be more than happy to cut some up for you because it is kind of what I would call like a two biter. Um, mm -hmm as far as size goes thank you <laughs> yeah um and then so a few years ago we introduced our midnight snack tomato which is a indigo type tomato cherry tomato it's another all america selection winner it's an indeterminate one yeah and the idea about the things that make the purple on this is anthocyanins the same things that make a blueberry blue um and the portion of the fruit that's exposed to sunlight is the portion that has the coloration on so you know that it'll be ripe when the bottom side has red because that's the portion that's not exposed um, to the sun. So the other nice thing about this is, is that because only the portion that's exposed to sunlight has the purpling, um, when you pick off the sepals, you can oftentimes get a little star. Um, but of course, the two that I just yeah. picked do not necessarily have it, but here's one. Thanks. Oh, yeah, let's take this one. There we go. It's a distorted star, but it's a star <laughs> nonetheless. Um, so that's one. So the thing is, is that was midnight snack. This, the fruit from this, came from a hanging basket type that we're going to be introducing in a few years. We don't even have a name for it yet, um, but we're going to have like an indigo midnight type um, with a hanging basket habit, so that folks that don't have a lot of space or want to grow things in the hanging basket now have the opportunity. And then the last thing, and then I promise I will let you go. So you know, utilitarian. Uh, is something else that we go for here. And the reality is, is that I love like ranch dressing. I like dips of any sort. And so one of the problems that you have, like if you get a vegetable platter and there's the cherry tomato in it, inevitably you're gonna put your finger in the dip and it's going to fall in. Your hands are gonna get all messy, whatever. So I asked our breeders if they would develop a variety that could solve that problem for me. And this is Sun Dipper. And as you can see, it's got this little handle on it that I now can easily dip without getting dirty um, or with the tomato falling in. And so that's something else that just is a way to kind of differentiate our products from other things that are out there because there really aren't that many things out there like that. And yes, you don't have to use it for dipping and stuff, whatever. You can also eat it. That's a good point. Okay, now I will let you. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, I will let you introduce your dip, though, because you made that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, start, I'll start with this one on the side. So we, we, we tried to label everything for you, but Josh has his tomatoes. We have uh, cream cheese with ahi rico hot sauce. So ahi rico is one of the peppers bred by American Seed, and they collabed with Gindo's Hot Sauce, which is a local hot sauce maker. So I've just poured that over cream cheese so you can spread that onto crackers. Um, Crackers, we have Ritz's, these are the rice gluten-free crackers in the center, and then just little um, kind of French bread baguettes, have plenty of those. And then Josh, you did- um... Yes, so I'll come clean with you guys. Last night I was working on this project, it was like 8.30 at night, and I'm like ready to relax for a second. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, I forgot I need me. to make a dip for everyone. So, but that's the point, like this is one, it's ricotta, 
the lemon, Everleaf lemon basil, olive oil, and salt. Put in a blender. It is super duper easy. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Not very complicated. <laughs> um, and then here we have a caprese mixed with the unicorn pink and unicorn red, which are new cherry tomatoes from the Berkey program. We have our patio snacker cucumber, which is great in a container. Um, mm -hmm. It grows nice and tall. And these are peppers from heaven, those basket peppers that I, um, JC Force, let me um, steal some of those. So just fresh eating for dips. We have hummus, ranch, and Josh's lovely ricotta. Um, you can also dip it in the cream cheese with the hot sauce. And then on the um, on the edge, we have our Rocio um, squashes from the Burpee program. These are going crazy in my garden. So I asked Tiffany Heater, our product manager for Burpee, what do I do with these? And she's like, zucchini fritters. So I looked it up on Pinterest and voila, we have zucchini fritters. It's panko um, flour, a little bit of Parmesan cheese and zucchini grated into these air fried little fritters. Again, dip them, yeah. keep them fresh. This is just a great way to show what you can do with your veggies. You can eat them fresh. You can put them on a crudite. You've got um, dips and mixes all, all around. Um, and then, yeah, feel free to dig in. We've got some napkins and some plates. And if you need waters, just let us know. We're gonna we're almost done with our tour and we're gonna head on back for the actual um, cocktail hour and, and light bites. But yeah, feel free to dig in. Oh, try it all. Yeah, try it all. And now I'm at the Burpee Display Gardens and you've just got to see how they've planted these edibles. You'll see them in the ground, you'll see them in pots. And what's really cool, different from last year, are these hanging baskets. Let me bring you closer. So first off, here is the bed that has all the new plants for 2025 from Burpee. The first section right here has the tomatoes and I can't even tell you how good they are. This first little pot is their collection called Take Two Action and it has a cherry and a slicer tomato all in one combo. So there's the slicer right there. Now behind that is my favorite cherry, new cherry at least, is the unicorn. If you like snacking cherry tomatoes like sun gold or sun cherry, you have to find unicorn next year and get this. It comes in pink. These are the pink blush tomatoes. They taste different from the red ones, which are on the other side. I'll pan over in a second, but look how many tomatoes are on that plant. Now this is the red one and moving along, here are the peppers. Now this is the Sweet Canyon Sweet Bell Pepper. It comes in orange, red, and yellow. And you can see these plants are not very big, but the fruit on them, wow, just look at that. These plants were all planted this year, so it's really impressive. Now we'll move on to top selling classics. This is the Thai Towers Everleaf Basil. I'm growing a few and they are phenomenal. And then this one is the Peppers from Heaven in orange. It also comes in yellow, which I'll show you right here. And they are great snacking peppers. And you can see it's not a very big plant, but a ton of fruit, which is awesome for small space gardeners. Now over here, this is the Love Gourmand Sun tomato. I grew these last year as an exclusive. They are so pretty, but also tasty. Now, this one is called Violet Delight and it is an eggplant. And if you take a look underneath the canopy, there are a ton of fruit. This is another snacking type of tomato and it, I am resisting. Well, I just can't resist. Here, I picked one off just to try. Um, let me see what else I can show you. Oh yeah, over here, there's more peppers from heaven in a basket and this is orange and then there's another orange one and I just can't get over, and this is yellow, I can't get over, and this is one that's orange, I can't get over how many fruit are actually on these plants. This is an orange zinnia, just to go with the color scheme, I think, and it's interplanted with cucumbers, which I love, and let's go see if we can find some fruit and let's see over in here i think this one's called fresh pickles and then back inside yep right there i see one now let's move along to the main event in this burpee section here are tiny temptations in baskets so these are determinate dwarf sized patio sized tomatoes the plant doesn't ever get that big so you can grow them in baskets i think there's a couple plants in each of these baskets again there's the peppers orange and yellow and tiny temptations come in orange 
and red and you can just see wow there's so many fruit you could pause the video and see if you can count them there's just so many and mind you the temperatures right now are in the 90s humidity is in the 90s 90 percent and I am just blown away by how much fruit you can actually grow from these baskets. And let's not forget this little contraption that is on, it looks like metal conduit. I want to have this set up so I can do these baskets. They, they look phenomenal, especially now that I have no more space for beds. If I could create this and just hang a bunch of fruit, it's away from pests. It's eye level, so it's ready for harvest. You won't miss a beat. And their airflow is just so much better for these plants too. I have to admit, I was anti tomatoes in baskets until I saw these. These tiny temptations are perfect for our baskets. All this talk about food is making me hungry. So I'm gonna go grab some lunch, but if you saw anything that you like, let me know in the comments. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.